had something, I was focused on the task you gave me, which was put this in the offering. And then I realized I was supposed to be up here. So <laughs> I got a little, a little mixed up. But good morning to all of you. Welcome this morning. What an awesome time of worship. I could just stay and worship all day. So good. The Lord has given me um, a word for you and a word for me. Actually, it's, it started with me. So <laughs> that's usually how it works, right? We, we speak out of what, again, I'm not talking to you, Siri. Okay, she'll be gone in a minute. Um, <laughs> Technology's been kind of uh, rising up against me this weekend, so. <laughs> um, but I'm going to have the victory. All right. Um, I knew that this, this message, uh, I know that this message is going to be uh, helpful to you and that God is in it because I had so much uh, resistance <laughs> with technology as I was putting it together. So um, I'm just excited to see what God's going to do. And, oh, I love that. She's so sweet. Okay. Um, let me just pray and get myself settled here, and then we'll, we'll jump in. I'm excited. Father God, we thank you for your peace, for your rest, and for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place, and we thank you for your sensitivity and your, your calling us into relationship. And so, God, I thank you for the opportunity to be a vessel, to share the message that you have put on my heart. And, Lord, I just dedicate it all to you. And um, I just thank you for your guidance, your direction, and your words. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you look good this morning. Like, for real. <laughs> Look like you mean it when you say it. <laughs> I like to do that. You know, not we don't always get that in the morning, and sometimes we need it. It gives us a little boost. Now, look at, see, now I see everyone is smiling. It's so awesome. I love it. Um, we are so blessed to have a God that loves us and desires to have relationship with us. And it started with so much of the things that, that Josh shared this morning. Um, about God's reaching out for us. He's coming after us, right? He, his idea was repentance. His idea was forgiveness, all of those things. And the gospel truth of, of, of salvation that he offers to us that is free, that is a free gift, it is just up to us to receive it and then to say yes and then to step into it. And when we step into it, it's giving our life to him and allowing him to give us new life. What happens when, when that happens is that he's now the Lord of our life, right? We're so used to, um, I, am, I, I am making this life for me. I am doing what's good for me. That's very popular, right? I'm doing me. I'm taking care of me. And when we receive that free gift of eternal life, that relationship with Jesus that comes through that sacrifice that he made for us, we receive it free. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to prove ourselves. We don't have to get our act together. Thank you, Jesus. We can just say yes to him. And that salvation, that gift of life is for us. But we want to make him our Lord. We want to make him the Lord of our life. Um, the thing about God is that he's a good, good father. He's not, it doesn't say he's a good puppeteer. It doesn't say that he's a good controller, a good manager, right? He is a good father. And what, what is the job of a father? The job of a father is to give you identity, to give you purpose, to give you who you are, to equip you, empower you, and send you on your way to be everything that he's created you to be. And that's what today's um, message is about. It is about partnering with God. And I'll have to say, I started working on it before our, our trip last week, but then things happened on the trip that just fell right into what he was speaking to me about, which is that 
He has given me things to partner with him on that I have said, yeah, that looks great. That looks so fun. Let's go, and I'm ready. <clears throat> but there have been things that God has given me and has shown me and given me a, a picture of that I have said, oh, yeah, that, oh, that's, that's, that looks awesome, but I have shied away from. I have felt ill-equipped or I have not felt ready. And, and I just say, that's great, God. I'll just wait for you to, like, make it happen, right? And what he talked to me about and what he showed me through a conversation with uh, my beautiful niece in Arizona this week was that, and she didn't say this to me, but just in our conversation, was, no, I've given you an assignment. I've shown you things that I want you to do. <laughs> Let's go, <laughs> Right? Have you ever experienced that and had the Father be like, I've already shown you, let's go. Sometimes I think when we um, put it off, when we delay it, or when we don't um, feel equipped or we don't feel confident enough to do the thing that he's shown us, and we stop talking to God about it, we kind of like pretend it's not there, you know, sweep it under the rug, and like that assignment is down, it's there. The rug's a little lumpy, but nobody will notice. And we stop talking about it, and pretty soon we forget all about it. We've moved on. We're doing all kinds of other things. I'm doing so many good things. God's not going to care about that thing under the rug because I'm doing all these other good things. But this weekend, he he showed me, he's like, I haven't forgotten about that. (laughs) That was an assignment. So let's lift up the rug and pull that baby out, and let's work on it. Let's do it together, right? That's a good father. A good father doesn't just send you on your way without preparation. He prepares you, and he's prepared me. He's prepared each of you for the thing that he has for you to do. I just The reason I talked about the gospel in the beginning is that I want you to understand that walking out those things that God gives you, that's not your salvation. You are not earning your way to God. You already have him. He's already your father. Jesus is already your savior. It's our response to him and what that looks like. And you know what? Sometimes those assignments, sometimes those things look little to you. They look like, that's just a little thing. He showed me this person that I need to go talk to or this, you know, family I need to just love on or this whatever. And it seems like a small thing. When you're obedient to God, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. Because you're walking out, you're representing his heart for those people. And you don't know. You don't know the impact. You don't know the seed that you're sowing. God is faithful and he loves those individuals. And those assignments are not small by any means. Sometimes assignments are confusing. Sometimes we get God kind of puts something in our path and we think, really? You want me to do that? (laughs) That doesn't suit me. That's not my personality. I'm not good at that, whatever it is. And you think, I would never do that. Those kind of assignments are most definitely the Lord (laughs) because he wants us a little off so that we can be dependent on him so we don't get too full of pride. There are so many things that, that, oh, I know how to do that. Oh, I know how to do that. But he calls us to do the thing that makes us uncomfortable, the thing that strips away all of our shell the parts of us that we walk in to, to make sure we feel good, that we, you know, we're fancy, we brushed our hair, and we look, you know, clean, and we smell good. And, but he wants us to do those things that are uncomfortable. It's like, oh, that's not me. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to be awkward at that. And he says, that's good. He loves it because it lets the real us come out and him who's in us. It's that authenticity. Um, yeah, I'm going to get in this. Okay. So, partnering with God. In Psalm 115, 16, it says, The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of man. And that word given comes from a Hebrew word that means to assign. So, we are on the earth, 
and it still belongs to God, but he has assigned us authority over it. He has assigned us the people in it. The people in your realm that you have influence over, he's put you there for a reason. You have people that, that are your people that he has put in your life for you to reflect his goodness, his love, his compassion, his mercy. How many of you have family members and friends and people in your life that you're praying for, you're believing for? Those are people in your, in your realm, right? But what about those people that you actually are engaged with, you actually do things with? You see them on the regular. You might consider them a friend or a family member, whatever, you, whatever it is. Sometimes we forget that, that's, that we have that, that assignment to reflect God's glory, to be everything that he's created us to be in order to bring them into our world and to encourage them and to love them, not to change them first, but to welcome them in, to let them know they're seen, that somebody knows them and sees them and hears them, recognizes them, cares about them. That's what it means for us to have the assignment, be assigned to the earth. Um, I am an intercessor, so I read a lot of books on prayer. And this is something that Dutch Sheets, he's, he wrote The Intercessor. This is something that he says um, in the book called Intercessory Prayer. God didn't give away ownership of the earth, but he did assign the responsibility to humanity to govern it. That's what I mean about us not being puppets. Sometimes we sit and we think, well, if it's God's will, then he's going to open the door. And then he's going to put me on a dolly and he's going to wheel me through the door. And he's going to set everything out in front of me and put the tool in my hand. And da -da -da, you know, it's not how it works. He opens doors and he puts things in front of us. And then he expects us to get up and walk through. The getting up sometimes is the hardest part. Once you're up and you're on your way, it's kind of like, okay, I'm just going to go for it. That's what happens to me when I go up those steps on Sundays. Because <laughs> I'm thinking about my message, and I'm thinking about, and I've been praying, and I've been enjoying worship. I think, okay, Lord, I hope I've got it. I hope I'm going to re represent you well and speak out what you have to say to your people. But by the time I'm walking, it's done. I'm, I'm done. I'm just surrendered to him. Let's go. Let's do this. It's not me, it's, but I had to get up. If I just stayed right there where Bob is sitting, he would be waiting for me. But I have to get up and go. If it's somebody you're supposed to love on, somebody you're supposed to serve in a certain way, God's waiting for you to get in your car and go and do it. <coughs> Time for you to go and buy that greeting card, that $7 greeting card. <laughs> oh, Dollar Tree, thank you, thank you. Uh, to do the thing, you know, and sometimes, like I said, it's the getting up that's the hard part. Who is God putting on your heart? Who is he putting on your mind? And what does he want you to do? That's your assignment. This, I'm going to skip because we are shorter on, okay, let's see. I'm not going to touch it too many times because I, I don't want to get in trouble. But we are created for good works. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God put the things inside of us already, what we need to do what's in front of us. Sometimes we don't believe it. Just like Gideon in the Bible that told the angel of the Lord, What? My people? Me? No, my people. No way. I don't. God has given you an assignment, but everything's already inside of you. And I heard this uh, recently is that sometimes when we doubt that that assignment's for us, it's because we've been watching the wrong documentary about our life. We think that, no, I, I won't look good doing that. I won't look smart doing that. I won't look strong doing that. I'm going to be in my, just not out of my element. But God is saying, it's okay. That's what I'm calling you to. And I've already put everything in you. You just haven't tried it. You haven't tried it. It's all in there. 
you have to step out. Step out, step up. <laughs> step up the steps. In Exodus, this is one of my favorite passages in the Bible because it has to do with being filled with the Holy Spirit, doing what God's created you to do, and creativity, which is like all the things. I love all those things. But this is, it's so beautiful. The Lord said to Moses, they're getting ready to build the tabernacle. Okay, they've been walking around in the desert, in the dirt. <laughs> you know, I, when I think about it, I think, well, I like to come to blend. And depending on what we're doing, sometimes the girls say, well, don't worry about bringing anything. I have everything. But sometimes if I know what we're going to do, I'm going to bring my tools that I like, my favorite paint colors and, you know, all the things. They're in the wilderness. And God assigns this person, Bezalel. I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God. This is before Acts. This is before Pentecost. Someone in the Old Testament filled with the Spirit of God. So cool. With the ability, these are all the things he filled him with. With the ability, the intelligence, knowledge, craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones. per se. They're in the wilderness. The Holy Spirit has filled this person and given him the ability to cut stones for setting. Like, the tabernacle, like, the Holy, only the Holy Spirit could do that. It's how I feel sometimes when I'm, I'm like a fish out of water doing something that's not my normal or not what I'm comfortable with. That's what God did. He gave him the ability to do all these things. In carving wood and to work in every craft. And behold, I have appointed him Oh, holy ab, the son of, uh -hmm, and the tribe of Dan. I got that. And I have given to all men ability that they may make all that I have commanded you. So that means he's given all of his workers the ability. So Bezalel's over here creating all the things and then putting his guys to work. So he's like the creative contractor. And then it's giving it to them. It's beautiful. And that is what God does with us. He gives us everything that we need, puts it inside of us, and then puts us there. Let me show you this. <clears throat> this is, looks really scary to me. But we saw our, uh, some of our kids yesterday, and one of our kids, I'm not going to tell you who, but one of them is undertaking the new hobby of mountain biking. Right? <laughs> That's what I said. Oh, I, I texted a couple of them and said, do you really call, is it really mountain, you're biking, you're riding a bike in the mountains? Yes, they're not, they're not doing that part yet. They're doing more of like hills and trails. They're in the training process. But this is what I saw when I was, I was thinking about it, is that this is the process that they're going through. They have to have all the right equipment. Do we have the right equipment? Yes. Say yes. <laughs> You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. He's giving you the right equipment to do the job in front of you. So to learn in this new hobby, he, this person had to get all the right equipment, right? Kind of bike, shoes, and all the things, right? I think a helmet as well, I would hope. I have to check with them and make sure. Helmets included, right? The other piece that they have is a coach. They have somebody teaching them how to do this new hobby. Thank goodness. And they were doing a practice trail yesterday. And uh, I guess there was one that was a, a step up from that in challenge-wise. And somebody who knew this kid said to his co coaches, um, you're not taking him on that trail, are you? You should take him on this trail because he's, he's new. <laughs> Thank you. So God does that with us. He puts us on the trail that's right for us to train us, to give us what we need to get, let us get our feet wet and practice, right? All those things, all those steps, those stages that we go through in life, our journey with God, each layer, each place, each thing we go through is that coaching practice. I, God didn't put me right here at 21. 
thank you, Jesus. Who knows what you had all been doing kid zone stuff because that's where I was at 21. <laughs> but each layer, each stage of life, we learn new things, right? Just like parenting. You start out with one baby and you practice on them. You practice on them. They don't tell you that at the hospital, but they need to. If it's the first one, this is your practice baby. So invest now in the therapy because they're going to need to go talk to somebody someday because of your practicing. <laughs> and then the next one gets a little better, a little smoother. Not the kid themselves. The kids are beautiful. They are God's gift to us. They are amazing. It's us. <laughs> Our practice gets a little better. We learned from the first one. I'm not going to do that with this one, so I'm going to do it this way. And then if you keep going, <laughs> each time they get better, right? So the more you have, I'm looking at the Edwards, the more you have, who's the baby? So the last one should be amazing. <laughs> And the others will point out, well, you didn't do that with me. You didn't do that with me. But you did because by the time you get down to what number are you? Eight. Lord have mercy. You, yeah, you just, you're either a, an expert or you're just exhausted, right? But this is how we learn. We walk through things. And each time we say yes to Jesus and we do the thing, that's uncomfortable, and we do it kind of rickety sometimes, but we're faithful, and we, we're obedient. God, he makes something beautiful out of our messiness, you know? He makes beautiful things come out of our rawness, out of our obedience. And it's our, it's our obedience, our saying yes to him, that's that, our sacrifice, our gift to him. I mean, look at everybody, look at Moses. He was a hot mess. He was obedient, but he made a lot of mistakes. David, after God's own heart, made a lot of mistakes. But God is looking at us to just say yes and partner with him with what it is that he has for us. Whatever that is. And it, the more we keep going, the more fun and the more beautiful it is. Or handsome, I don't know the more adventurous and exciting it is for those masculine folks in the room. So we are friends of God. <coughs> in John 15, it says, uh, in verse 15 and 16, it says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant doesn't know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all things I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit shall remain. Servants are worried about disobeying. <coughs> I know I just talked about obedience a lot, but we're friends of God. And our heart, as we develop our relationship with Jesus, we become more concerned with disappointing him than disobeying, if that makes sense. It's kind of the same thing, but it comes from a different heart posture. And that, that helps me <laughs> when I'm resisting something that makes me uncomfortable if I know that this might disappoint God, he wants me to do this because he has something amazing for me. And I think about how it is with children. We, when we want them to do something, to try something, to learn something, it's for their good, right? It's for their good. That's how God feels about us. So it's not about feeling shame or condemnation, but it's about wanting to honor him and who he, who he says we are. <coughs> okay. Jump, jump ahead here. Where am I? In Nehemiah. Okay, I jumped ahead a little bit, but I want to talk to you a minute about two guys, Jonah and Nehemiah. Jonah was given a task. These are different examples of how God um, releases assignment to us. Jonah was given an assignment. God asked him to go to Nineveh and to tell the people, to give the message that God had for them so that they 
would be saved. Otherwise, God was going to destroy the city, destroy the people. And Jonah resisted that assignment. We know the story. He runs away. He literally pays fare to get away. But he's repentant when he endures some tribulation, right? He is in a stormy, a stormy storm <laughs> on a stormy boat, and he's thrown into the water, swallowed by a, all the things, all the crazy things we know about Jonah. He is eventually brought to a place of repentance and of wanting to say, okay, God, I'll do what you want me to do. Jonah's so funny. He finally does it, and God, and, and the people turn their hearts towards God, and Jonah's irritated. He's frustrated. I've, I've been there. That self-righteous, judgmental, not good stuff, I've walked in that. Thank God for his mercy and his grace and for repentance and forgiveness that Josh talked about earlier. What I think is so awesome is that I, I never realized this, I never thought about it until last night when I was reading this, reading the book of Jonah for the, I don't even know, like the 10th time in the last couple weeks. So, because it ends kind of at the end of the fourth chapter, it just kind of ends. And I realized as I was, I was reading some commentaries that Jonah was a prophet. He was called by God. He was a mess. <laughs> but what did he do? We wouldn't have that story if he hadn't written it about himself to be read forever in the scripture. He maybe didn't realize how far <laughs> that was going to go, but he was willing to share his story to reveal to everyone himself of his response. That is how God used his story and uses it even today to help us to grow into that obedience and grow into that honoring God and honoring that assignment so that we can partner with God, with what God's heart is, with what he's doing. I was going to talk about Paul. Paul writes so beautifully in all of the, the New Testament about the love God has for people and the restoration for them. He got the message. He knew the message, and he represents it well in all of the epistles. He was partnering with God by walking out God's message and loving on the people, shepherding people, sending people, assigning people. He understood. Now, this example, Nehemiah, <clears throat> I'm not going to read it for sake of time, but what I think is beautiful about Nehemiah is that in his case, he was not given like, oh, here's your assignment. <laughs> he saw a problem and his heart grieved. And his very first response to seeing the problem was to pray, to fast and to pray. He saw the problem. He wanted to do something about it. He had a dream. Where did that dream come from? It came from his heart. But God put it there because Nehemiah was an intercessor. Nehemiah had a relationship with God. When we have relationship with God, when we have communion with him regularly, and I'm not talking about just a little cup and the wafer thing. I mean communion with him, like we're with him, we're communing with him regularly. We know his heart. So then when we see things that don't line up with his heart, we immediately get a dream. What if this could happen? What if that could happen? Two years ago, when I began to read about the foster care system and how many children are in the system and how many foster parents there are available to take in children, my heart was broken. And to hear some of the stories that was happening to the children and to their families, I had a dream. There was a, a, an organization already in place, so I didn't have to create anything from scratch but I could partner with this organization. 
And my dream was that us as a body would also partner with that organization and be able to help whatever children and families we could reach you know, within a reasonable distance because they're everywhere. When I go on the website and I look for, you know, oh, I have a car seat or I have a crib to give, I have to control myself because I'll be driving you know, all the way to Nebraska with stuff. I have to, I have to give myself a, a window. Um, but there are other churches participating as well. But my, my reason for sharing that is that I saw that problem and God put a dream in my heart of what we could do to help. Is that the only thing that we do here? No, we do amazing, a, a lot of other things with God for the community. But that's just one example of seeing a problem and God putting a dream in my heart. He didn't say, uh, Kim, thus saith the Lord. You need to collect cribs and car seats and da 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 da. No, he just kind of showed me a picture of something that was happening. And this is what happened with Nehemiah. He saw the condition of his city and of, his te- of the temple and where his people were from, and it broke his heart. And he knew that if things were restored, that his people could be restored. God's people could be restored. And so he had that dream. And this is what this message is all about. It is all about us dreaming with God. How do you dream with God? I was talking to Bob on the way here this morning, is that sometimes we get dreams that are, that are cool, <laughs> but they're, they're things that we've come up with, um, and they're not out of a, how do I say this? Our dreams, our thoughts, our expectations are birthed out of what we're intimate with, what we're spending time with, what we're staring at, what we're aware of. And so if we are with the Lord and we're talking with him and we're walking through life with him, we're aware of his heart, then the dreams and the visions and the things that we want to walk in are going to be in alignment with him. And they're going to be his dreams. And he is more excited to participate and walk with us through those dreams than we are to even tell him about it. Have you ever had a dream? I feel like God is saying today, it is time to dream again. If it's been a while and you're just kind of going day by day, I'm in survival mode, if I can just pay the bills and get along, God wants to give you a dream. He wants to give you a dream. If you say, yes, Lord, he will give you a dream. When he gives you a dream, it doesn't matter what's happening in the world because he's given you a dream. When God showed me the children, the foster care system, the mess, and what we could do, that was during COVID. We couldn't come here. I was stuck at home disinfecting my stupid groceries. But God showed me something I could do. And we could order cribs and we could do the things and we could deliver things with masks and whatever it took. When that shift happened, the joy came back into my life that had gone because of being isolated and shut down. That year has passed, but some of us are still shut down. And it's because you're not letting yourself dream. And you're not imagining what God wants to do through you. And it might be something really amazing that you see right now, and it might be something you're not even aware of yet. But he wants to put that in your heart and run with you. Let me tell you, there is nothing like having your child come to you and say, Mom, Dad, I have a dream. I want to do this thing. It happens to us and we just get so excited for all of them. Nolan and Josh and Kiata, and they, they made a studio in their home to record music. And to see, as a parent, to see the passion and excitement in their eyes and in their heart as they were putting it together and then getting the little, glim- the little pictures on Instagram, I'm like, hey, send me more, of them recording and, and I know they're in there singing. That just makes us come alive, just the way the Father comes alive when we walk in the dream that he's given us. 
the men going to Skid Row, right? I mean, maybe God said, go to Skid Row. Maybe he did. Or maybe they said, hey, you know what? Skid Row's over there. Let's go. What, what can we bring? And, and it just snowballed into something amazing. God wants to do something amazing through you and with you. I'm getting excited, but we can't, keep, we can't stay here all, all the day. <laughs> Dreams are born in communion, just like offenses and bitterness is born in communion. When we get offended easily, when we become bitter, sometimes that happens because we have entertained those kinds of thoughts and we have participated in that kind of, we've let it kind of bogged us down. And that becomes the, what kind of dreams we're dreaming. It becomes the thoughts we're having. Yes, sir. No. Praise God. <laughs> That's, that's amazing. And you know what? That could happen. That could happen for you. 92, and he's still going. Still going. I have to repent for thinking that I'm too old to do things that God's put on my heart. One of those things that I was made aware of last weekend with my niece. Because I look at myself and I go, I can't. I'm not. I'm too old. I'm judging myself, right? And God is saying, that's... I didn't talk to you about that. I just said, you need to do this. Okay, I'm going to do it. I feel weird, but I'm going to do it weird. And God's going to make it into something, right? So let's, can you just play something? And I'm going to, I'm going to give you this invitation. Um, In John 15, verse 7, did I put that up there? Oh, yes, I did. Verse 7, it says, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. I think that sometimes if we're focusing on God being our vending machine, we're thinking that means I ask God whatever I want and he's going to give it to me. What it's talking about is abiding in him, communing with him. And when he puts that dream in our heart and we become pregnant with a dream, then as we pray for him to open doors and cause it to come forth, he will do everything that needs to happen for it to come forth. Maybe it's your family. Maybe you're believing for your kids. Maybe you're believing for grandkids. Maybe you're believing for breakthrough in some area. Maybe you see yourself doing something for God that that is, is crazy and way out there. We don't know how long it'll take for you to get there, but Pastor Ruben's 92. You've got plenty of time. Just ask him and step out when he gives you an opportunity. Sometimes we see the big thing we want to do, and he's going, well, here's something right here. Here's something right here. There's a neighbor that lives alone. What about you just take care of that neighbor? And don't worry about that. That'll come. You've got time. Let's stand up and... uh, pray I had to ask God I actually knew (laughs) once I realized but um, I had to repent and say God I apologize for ignoring something that you've put in my path that you've, you've shown me I was to do I even tried to make other people do it I did He gave me the dream. He gave me this dream like 10 years ago to do things on social media for young people. And I thought I was too old. So I invited a bunch of young people to my house and I made them do it. (laughs) And it didn't work. It just fell to the ground. It's on my computer, but it never made it. You know, it didn't do anything because he gave me the assignment. And when I talked to my niece, it's like he showed me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Abraham was 100. 
Noah was like 80 or something. I don't even know. They were all out, up there. And God just gave them these assignments. It doesn't matter. So this is what I want us to pray this morning. Close your eyes and just speak to him your own way and ask the Lord, where in my life have I missed partnering with you? Give me eyes to see and ears to hear and highlight today a dream, an idea, a person, whatever. Thank you. A person, an idea, whatever you have placed in front of me as an invitation to partner with you. That's really wordy. So I'm just going to say this. Just close your eyes and say, God, where have I missed it? Show me what it is that you have for me to do. What is that dream? Remind me of that thing that I have ignored. Remind me of that thing that I swept under the rug. Give me a picture of it. Is there something I was supposed to write? Is there something you want me to write? Is there a person that, I, that you want me to love on? What is, the, what is it? And whatever comes to mind first, do not doubt. When God speaks to you, when Holy Spirit speaks to you, it's, it's usually the very first thing that rushes into your thoughts. And the enemy wants to snatch it away. So he immediately says, no, that was you. You made that up. So if you just heard that, you can laugh at him. I'm not going to listen to you, devil, because the first thing that popped into my mind was this. This is what God put on my heart. And so I'm going to seek him, and I'm going to lay down whatever's in the way, and I'm going to begin to walk in that thing, walk in that assignment. If you would like somebody to pray with you about this, about, an, about something that you, that you feel like you've ignored or you've forgotten, that God is stirring up inside of you again, please feel free to come up and pray, or you can, Mike and Carrie are in the back. They would love to pray with you if you're more comfortable going to them, but feel free to come up here, and we would love to pray with you. Dad's here, myself, um, Christina, whoever, to pray for those who might be feeling that. And, and if it's something else, that is okay too. I, I have to tell you this. Whatever you need prayer for, it's legal. You can come and ask for prayer. It doesn't have to fit exactly what I just said. So if you have something else that you need prayer for, come. We would love to pray with you. I'm going to pray and then just let them uh, play music, worship, and then I'll meet you here. Father God, I thank you for partnering with us, for giving us everything that we need to walk out the assignments and the things that you've put in our life, Lord. And we repent of ignoring them. We repent of, of having fear of man, of ignoring those things, of not walking in our assignments because we believed something less about your ability to work through us. So God, this morning, we say yes. Let our yes be yes. We say yes to you. And we thank you for giving us everything we need to walk it out. And we ask that you would be um, with our families and those we've been believing for and, and, and speaking the word over. We know that your promises are true and that you are faithful. And we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Your promise is to make, a, make it fruitful, to make whatever we walk in fruitful. And so we just say yes to you, whatever that looks like. And we receive the, the new dreams. We receive the old dreams revived. And Lord, we just say yes to you. And we give you glory this morning. Let us be your instruments. Let us be your vessels of bringing heaven to earth in whatever way that you decide. I thank you in Jesus' name.